Hey yo! My name is Justin, aka Shanky, and this is Shanky JRPGs. Nintendo had a partner showcase today, February 21st, 2024, and while not too JRPG heavy, it did feature some interesting titles. Let's talk about them. But before we get started, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see more news and more JRPG game coverage. Anyways, pop your drink and ice your corn- wait a minute, that's not right. Pop your corn and ice your drink and let's talk games. The Direct started off with Grounded, to be released on April 16th, 2024 for the Nintendo Switch. Grounded has been on Game Pass for quite some time and is still in early access, or at least it was the last time I checked. I haven't played it myself, but it seems like your typical survival scavenger game mixed with Honey I Shrunk the Kids. It could be fun, not my type of game, but I'm sure it has its audience. Next, we jumped into Ender Magnolia Bloom in the Mist, slated for a 2024 release. This is a sequel to the 2021 Metroidvania Ender Lilies Quietus of the Nights. I loved Ender Lilies, and this game looks just as great. I really like the art style, and I'm sure this game is going to be tear-jerking just like the first game. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more information on this game as it goes further into development. Then we got A Ranger, a role-puzzling adventure. Seems like a cute little puzzle sliding game. It's got a neat little art style and it could be fun. Perfect for a portable pick up and play game. I'll be honest, I'm probably going to pick this up because it seems like just a fun, chill game. Oh hey, RPG, woohoo! Unicorn Overlord got a new trailer? At least I think it's a new trailer. Personally, it looks neat and I love the vanillaware art style, but I'm not a fan of RTS. That being said, I'll probably pick it up. Oh, and it got a demo, so that's always there if you want to give it a shot. Remember my video on 3DS RPGs that need Switch ports? One of the games on that list was indeed Monster Hunter Stories. It turns out that Nintendo has been stalking my videos and decided to take one of my choices and give it a port. Okay, I'm sure they're not stalking my videos, but it is a mighty coincidence. And it's also coming to PlayStation 4 and PC in addition to Switch, sometime during summer 2024. Now, if we could only get the rest of my list to be ported, that would be great. Then we have Disney Epic Mickey Rebrushed, set for a 2024 release. These Mickey games were deceptively good. This is a remaster of the 2010 release of the same name for the Wii. I really like the whole PS2 platformer aesthetic this game has, and I never really got the chance to play it originally, so I'll definitely be picking it up. Young Man. Shin Megami Tensei 5 was so good, and I'm glad we're getting a complete version with a new storyline. Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance is scheduled for a June 21st, 2024 release, and is being released on PS4, PS5, Switch, PC, and Xbox. It's going to be nice to play this without the struggling performance that the original had on Switch. This year continues to be solid for JRPG fans. Then we have Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, being released on March 14th, 2024. These games were almost like the original Battle Royales. They're a ton of fun and much better than those online multiplayer focused re-releases. I'm sure these will be super fun to play all over again. Oh, South Park Snow Day. Scheduled for release on March 26th, 2024. Can you hear the disappointment in my voice? I enjoy South Park and the jokes, but I have little to no interest in this. You took some brilliant turn-based RPGs and turned it into a multiplayer whatever this is. Calling it now, this game is going to be full of microtransactions. Also, who releases a game based on a snow day in March? Come on. I can't help but wonder how these games keep getting released. Surely the anime isn't that popular. Sword Art Online Fractured Daydream is scheduled for a 2024 release and seems to be focused on a multiplayer aspect featuring up to 20 player co-op. 
kind of reminds me of Grand Blue Relink multiplayer, but to a grander scale. It could be fun, but definitely not something that I'm going to buy, at least until it goes on sale. Please be better than New Gundam Breaker. Please be better than New Gundam Breaker. Gundam Breaker 4 is scheduled to be released in 2024 for Switch, PS4, PS5, and Steam. This game gives me mad custom robo vibes, and I played the heck out of that on GameCube. I don't know much about Gundam, but if you put giant robots into a video game, it is always going to be a win in my book. Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble releasing on June 25th, 2024 further packing our summer full of video games, including more than 200 new levels and featuring a spin dash to create shortcuts, also featuring a race mode. These games are fun, though they do frustrate me with the physics. I remember when I streamed Banana Blitz uh, probably about a year ago now, I have never been more frustrated with a video game in my life. That being said, I'll probably really enjoy this when it comes out, so I'm looking forward to it. World of Goo 2, to be released on May 23rd, 2024 for Switch and PC. I don't even know what to say about World of Goo 2. Seems like a puzzle game with slop. Good old sloppy puzzle games, this time with multiplayer if you want to play it on the Switch. Multiplayer puzzle games just sound like pure chaos, and I'm always ready to embrace chaos. After all, I'm the sole person that enjoyed Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. I don't know how the game is pronounced. Fantasy Life I? One? I? Anyways, Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time. Releasing in 2024. Okay, I love this art style. Kind of reminds me of Professor Layton, which makes sense as it is level 5. This seems like a cozy game, but the title of that makes me think it has something to do with time travel. I love cozy games and time travel, so... This is definitely one that I'm going to have to keep my eye on. You get a souls like. You get a souls like. Everybody gets a souls like. Another Crab's Treasure scheduled for release in 2024. This game was advertised as a crabby souls like where you play as a hermit crab and get new abilities based on what you're using for your shell. It seems really interesting, but I've never really been a fan of souls like. It does look absolutely adorable, though. Penny's Big Breakaway, available immediately for purchase. This game instantly made me think of old PS2 platformers. It doesn't look spectacular, but it seems like it'll instantly give you that nostalgic feeling of games you grew up playing. Honestly, considering giving this one a shot. Suica Game Multiplayer, available immediately. I swear, this is a game that every VTuber on the planet is playing, and now they can all play it together. This game in itself is simple but mindless fun. I've never really gotten into the game, but I've noticed it's always on sale for 99 cents. Should I pick it up? Pepper Grinder, releasing in 2024. This game kind of reminded me of Shantae, but with a Mr. Driller kind of weapon. The first thing I noticed is you actually drilled through a monster's cranium. That's a little bit violent and is not something that I would want to experience. That poor monster. What are we going to do with him? Anyways, it honestly seems like a solid platformer. There's also a demo available, so I might give that a shot. Pocket Card Jockey, right on. Available for purchase immediately. Such a weird combination. It combines horse racing and solitaire. It's really strange, but hey, I mean, I guess if you're into equestrian solitaire, you should go for it. Not my jam, but I'm sure there's someone jamming to it somewhere out there in the internet land of infinite possibilities. We then had a quick reel of games. Snufkin, Melody of Moomin Valley, Outside of the ridiculous name, it looks like a strange side-scrolling adventure. Tales of Kenzera, oh boy, Namco gonna sue EA. But at first look, I thought it was an Ubisoft Prince of Persia spinoff. 
then a remaster of Kingdom Come Deliverance, after that we got a Demon Slayer Mario Party, a new Contra, and Pentiment with a beautiful art style. The final two announcements were less spectacular than I was expecting, but we are getting a bunch of rare games on Nintendo Switch Online. For Super Nintendo, RC Pro-Am, Killer Instinct, Snake Rattle and Roll, Battle Toads and Battle Maniacs, and for Nintendo 64, we are getting Blast Core. I am by far most excited for Killer Instinct. I love my fighting games, and Killer Instinct is amazing. Blast Core is also a game that I grew up playing a lot of. Nothing is more fun than destruction, and that's what Blast Core is all about. As for the final announcement, I was sitting here expecting something huge. Bravely Collection? Breath of Fire Collection? Mega Man Legends 3? Nope. Just Endless Ocean Luminous, which is scheduled for release in May 2024. Endless Ocean was initially a series that debuted on the Wii. The game looks neat, but it's just exploring the ocean and logging your finds. I was expecting something more, but this is just kind of okay. Is this series popular or something? Because I haven't even really heard of it, other than the initial release. Oh well, hopefully it's a good game because closing up the direct with it was a big oof. All in all, I'd say the Nintendo Direct was okay but not something that gave me any real substantial hype moments. The standard announcements for me were definitely Ender Magnolia, Monster Hunter Stories, and Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. I'd probably give the Partner Showcase a solid 7 out of 10. Not bad, but not particularly mind-blowing. What were your favorite announcements, and did you enjoy the Direct? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed my recap and want more JRPG content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I put out at least one video a week, so there's always going to be content for you to enjoy. Anyways, as always, thanks for popping by and have a wonderful day.